So all you housewives out there, how to prepare your Christmas turkey. So, George, how do you do that? Hey, that's a beautiful bird. Well, Glenn, maybe to you it's a bird, but to me it's a dear, dear friend. What? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this ain't your average run-of-the-mill commonary supermarket butterball. You are looking at my best friend. Your, your best friend? That's right. I raised this turkey from an egg. Oh, come on. You, you mean you raised him from the time it was hatched? No, before that, I sat on the egg. So how'd you do that? Very carefully. <laughs> I mean, you gotta sit there three weeks and you know, you just go this way one little bit, you know? Or even if you go that way one little bit. Yeah. You ain't gonna get no turkey, you're gonna have an omelet. <laughs> anyway, George, you're telling me you sat on a turkey egg for three weeks. Glenn, I didn't come all the way down here to tell you a lot of big lies. If I say, you know, 24 hours a day for three weeks, there I sat with my little bag all packed, ready for the big moment. <laughs> What'd you do all that time? Well, I knitted little three-toed booties. <laughs> I read Lady in Waiting magazine. <laughs> well, what did Alice say? Oh, Alice. Alice said I never looked lovelier than I was in, when I was expecting little Buford. Oh, that's his name, uh, Buford? Buford, that's his name. And, and sure enough, one morning about 3 o'clock, about 3 o'clock, I felt this little pecking sensation. <laughs> Little Buford, he was coming out of his shell. And, and I tell you, I just about came out of my jammies. Oh. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, labor pains, forget it. They're nothing compared to that, you know. So you can see that old Buford and I have been through a lot. Now, come, come on, George. You mean to tell me you had this turkey running around the house just like part of the family? Yeah, and messy. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, really, if there had been a newspaper strike at that time, it would have been all over. <laughs> but he was a beauty. He really was. He, it got so where I couldn't go anyplace without old Buford. Oh, really? And every night he used to sleep at the foot of our bed. Mm. It was real cute. And then one night he crawled right up in between me and spooky old Alice. You know? I bet that made you mad, huh? No, no. The way I look at it, uh, ain't too much difference between a cold turkey and a cold shoulder. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, really, it was kind of cute when he was sleeping with us, when he was little. Yeah. When he was little. But by the time he got to be this size, you know, he got to hogging the, the covers and, and uh, well, something had to be done, you know. Yeah. Every, so I said to Alice, I knew something had to be, I said, Alice, what do you want me to do with my turkey? And she told me. <laughs> and uh, so here we are stuffing it. <laughs> making a meal out of your best friend. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all right. He looks real natural laid out like that, don't he? I don't know. You take their feathers off and they all look alike to me. <laughs> now, you see, you just can't help yourself, you know. Now, now there you go making mock at old Buford. Just because he happens to be stark naked. <laughs> But I want to tell you something. There was a time when he was a snappy dresser. He re that was before the accident. What accident, George? Well, actually, I don't believe it was really an accident. See, one day, spooky old Alice got after him with the vacuum cleaner. You know what it did? Sucked off his tail feathers just like that. Really? Oh, I'm telling you, his pride was hurt so bad. It was sad, Glenn. It, I had to make him a whole new tail. Well, how'd you do that? Well, I took a bunch of old neckties and I starched them up real good, and then I stuck them onto Buford's posterior. <laughs> and it was colorful, I'll say. And you talk about proud. Oh, that Buford, he was proud. You know what he used to do, Glenn? You what? won't believe this. He used to go strutting around like this, you know, with them neckties sticking out there. You know. Oh, he'd strut. He'd kind of get the thing. <laughs> And, 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 and if, if I wasn't there to watch him, he'd holler for me. He'd say, gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> he was a strutting around there, you know. You, you know what the neighbors used to call him? No, what, George? Well... <laughs> the neighbors used to call him the proud bird with the gobble tail. <laughs> Uh, 
Are you gonna, you're gonna show me how to dress your bird or not, George? Well, there's only one thing you really have to know. Oh, you see, I got this bottle right here. Uh, yeah. the, the main thing, you just add a dash of Napoleon brandy. But well, why Napoleon brandy? Why Napoleon? Well, Napoleon, old Nappy, he was Buford's idol. Because oh. he knew how to hold his brandy. How he used to hold it? He used to hold uh, it right here under his coat. You've seen him pick it. <laughs> Kept his tummy warm. Oh. Now, you got to have just the right touch. See? Oh. A drop for thee, and a drop for me. <laughs> well, George, uh, can we get on with uh, getting the turkey ready? <laughs> Partner, that's as far as I go. Oh? Yeah, because by the time I finish the brandy, I start to get warm all over. Oh? And, and when I get that feeling like that, you know, I just get a real craving for Chinese food. Well, what about Buford? Let him get his own Chinese. <laughs>